Good evening. Welcome to Mayor Carlos Jimenez's fiscal year proposed 2011-2012 budget. The mayor will deliver combined remarks in English and Spanish, followed by questions and answers. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, and uh, good evening, everyone, uh, and thanks for joining me here at uh, County Hall. As you know, um, I'm here today to officially unveil the fiscal year 2011 and 2012 budget. My primary focus in the 12 short days that I've been in office has been on putting this document together. I'm rolling out this budget today rather than on Friday to allow the Board of County Commissioners as much time as possible to digest the details before they meet to set the millage rate next week. Crafting a budget is never an easy process, and the choices that I have been faced with in recent days are difficult ones, have been difficult ones. I fully understand that they will impact our residents as well as our public servants and their families. Muy buenas tardes. Hoy estoy presentando el presupuesto fiscal del condado para el nuevo año. Ha sido un proceso muy difícil, lleno de decisiones que afectarán a nuestros residentes y también a nuestros trabajadores y sus familias. Pero como prometí en mi campaña, estoy reduciendo los impuestos por más de 200 millones de dólares, bajando las tasas de impuestos a la propiedad y eliminando casi 1,300 posiciones. This year's county budget reflects the sobering economic realities that our region is currently facing, and it calls on our public servants to make a shared sacrifice for the greater good of our residents and the organization itself. This budget meets many of the pledges that I made to our residents. I promise to lighten the burden on homeowners and small businesses. This budget cuts taxes by more than $200 million, undoing last year's rate increases. I promise to hold true to our, our critical missions. This budget protects seniors, children, and public safety. I promise to shrink the size of government. This budget eliminates nearly 1,300 positions. For too long now, the residents that we serve have been making financial sacrifices, adjusting, adjusting their lifestyles, and tightening belts within their own households in order to survive this economic storm. It is time that we as a government do the same. Doing so will allow this organization to return to the efficient delivery of service, of core services, to residents and visitors, while protecting vital programs for our most vulnerable residents. Earlier this week, County workers under my purview were informed that their health benefits contribution will increase by 5%. This is a positive first step, and I'm grateful for their shared sacrifice, but more must be done to get this fiscal house in order. En tiempos recientes, nuestros residentes han estado haciendo sacrificios monetarios y tomando decisiones difíciles en sus vidas diarias. Ahora es tiempo que nuestro gobierno haga exactamente lo mismo. Si hacemos estos sacrificios compartidos ahora, lograremos seguir protegiendo y ofreciendo los servicios esenciales a nuestros residentes. I met with some of our local union partners and balancing this budget will require significant concessions and shared sacrifice. I'm eager to begin negotiations with them and know that they understand that economic reality will dictate the terms. Let me take a few moments to highlight some major points in this budget. First, as I mentioned at the outset, the budget includes over $200 million in tax cuts. It calls for the double-digit property tax rate hike passed last year, in which I voted against as a commissioner, uh, to be rolled back. Rollback will ease the hev heavy financial burden that was heaped on the backs of our residents. Specifically, and in keeping with a pledge that I made to our residents, I am proposing that the fiscal year 2011-2012 combined millage rate be set at 7.405, the same combined millage rate as fiscal year 2009-2010. Second, this budget fulfills my pledge to preserve essential services such as public safety and programs for seniors. This budget does not reduce public safety service levels. Furthermore, I have identified funding to continue the $100 rebate program for senior citizens and funds that protect meal programs for the elderly. Lastly, this budget calls for the elimination of nearly 1,300 positions, of which approximately 500 are vacant. These cuts are undoubtedly among the toughest decisions I have had to make. 
while they will not affect the level of service of public safety, they clearly represent a significant adjustment to the county workforce. Along with cuts in personnel, we've had to ex assess our priorities in order to make tough choices and cut some services. Unfortunately, our county library system will be affected. Sunday hours and extended evening hours have been eliminated at the regional libraries. 13 branch locations will be closed. This decision was based on a thorough policy analysis that included proximity to other library locations and door counts. We will offset these service reductions using bookmobiles that will reach effective neighborhoods. Additionally, we are working with business leaders in the community to develop a program for the private sector to support some of these functions in conjunction with the organization Friends of the Library. The Head Start Child Care Program currently administered by the Community Action Agency will continue, but the county will no longer run the services. Again, there will not be a reduction in service. This decision was made to reduce costs while ensuring that the continued level of service uh, to the children are, are continued. In the coming weeks, I'll be working hard to inform our residents uh, of the budget actions that we are taking and what impact those actions will have on the services that they benefit from. These outreach efforts will begin tomorrow at 7 o'clock with a Facebook town hall meeting and will be followed by a series of traditional town hall meetings throughout the county. Before I conclude and move on to questions, I'd like to thank my staff as well as all of the department staff here at the county who have helped me put this budget together. It has been a sprint. Para mantener servicios esenciales, tenemos que con, contar, cortar o eliminar varios programas. Nuestras bibliotecas estarán afectadas, pero estamos tomando me, medio, medidas para reducir el impacto que tendrá en nuestra comunidad. También el programa Head Start no será operado por la agencia del condado. Sin embargo, este programa va a seguir sirviendo a los niños en nuestra comunidad. En las semanas que, que vienen, los invito a una serie de reuniones públicas donde voy a discutir los detalles y efectos de este presupuesto. In closing, I'll say this about the 2011-2012 budget. What you see is what you get. There's no sugar coating, and it is what it is. With that, I'll open the floor to questions. Are the 395 Head Start jobs included in the 1,300? Yes, ma'am, they are. And where, if, if services are going to continue, where is that money going to come from? The services, we are the grantee uh, to Head Start. We'll continue to be the grantee. Uh, our proposal calls for the delegated agencies or additional dele uh, delegated agencies to take over the Head Start program, which will assure that the children will, children will continue to get, get those, uh, those services. You also mentioned 35. There's a 35% cut to um, public service. Uh, public safety, I should say, but you just mentioned that there won't be any cuts where the of the contributors, the cuts that were made in in, uh, in the county, it's not thirty five percent to public safety. Of the cuts that were made, thirty five percent come from from public safety. There is uh, two hundred and fifty vacant uh, police officer positions that are going to be eliminated. There are also uh, we're cutting cutting back on the fire boats in the fire department, and we're uh, also there are fifty two other positions in the fire department that are going to be uh, eliminated. That will not affect the uh, services at the street level. All, all county fire stations and all the units are going to continue to remain in service. Okay. Somebody said that I inverted the numbers on the combined millage rate. Okay. So I want to make sure that everybody gets that. The combined millage rate will be 9.7405, the same rate as 2009-2010. Okay. I want to make sure that's clear. Um, you said you spoke to the unions uh, initially about how sacrifice needs to be made. What kind of feedback did you get, and did you get any sense that they'd be willing to, to work with you um, with some of the numbers? Uh, let me say that we had some frank uh, talks with uh, certain unions. I haven't spoken to all of them yet. Uh, and the ones that I have spoken to understand the economic reality. Uh, they have, the union presidents and leaders have a job to do to protect the interests of their workers, and I have a job to do to protect the interests of the citizens of Miami-Dade County. The negotiations are not going to be easy, uh, and I, I would be, you know, be, if I were saying otherwise, it wouldn't be true. Uh, but uh, 
there is, a, I think, a sense of mutual respect. I certainly respect their position. I think they respect mine. And then we'll see where this takes us. In the booklet here, it says that um, it would be reduction to fire rescue, 89 sworn positions and 62 civilian positions and five communication positions. Those aren't the ones that are vacant at, at, at the moment, are they? There are a number of vacant positions uh, right now. The other 36 that we're going to be, uh, the 36 positions in the fire boats are going to be, uh, uh, through attrition, we'll be able to absorb uh, those positions. There won't be any layoffs there. Again, the, to me, the, the most important aspect of that is that no fire stations will be closed, no units will, will close. They'll continue to provide the essential services to the citizens of Miami-Dade County. Yes. Um, what do you think about uh, to balance the budget every year? Uh, the mayor office always uh, uses the employee to reduce their salary every year. Then we have uh, some duplicated services like a uh, uh, Miami did housing. There's a Miami did authority. There's uh, three departments like a GSA. Always uh, the contractor bill over the Miami did county. There is a three department like uh, CCAA, Community Action Agency. Those departments uh, do the same service, mm -hmm. like housing department, right. the Miami Dade Housing Authority. Right. Uh, we have um, economic development, Miami Dade. They do several services economic. That means, why not the Miami Dade County, the government cannot reduce those departments to duplicate the services? Again, but that's, that's a great question, and let me, let me answer it. The, the table of organization is not being released right now. Uh, I made a pledge during the, the, my campaign that I was going to reduce the number of departments in Miami-Dade County from the 45, 50 that we have today down to 25. In the next uh, 45 days before the first budget hearing, the table of organization will be released. We're, gonna, we're working on it. And those kind of issues that we're talking about are exactly the issues that we'll be tackling in the next uh, 45 days. Those are details that we, we haven't finalized yet. Uh, we're working on it as we speak. I wanted to get this budget in uh, balanced, and this gives us a bu balanced budget. But the table of organization, the number of departments, who they're reporting to, et cetera, that hasn't been finalized yet, it will be finalized in the next 45 days. And for GSA also. The GSA has some contractors. Well, this is going to be a top down, uh, a, a bottom, top to bottom review of every single department, every single function, and we're going to get down to 25 departments. Thank you so much. Sir. You're welcome, sir. Simplemente porque se tenía que que poner prioridades en las cosas que vamos los servicios esenciales que que tenemos que mantener y por eso tomamos esa decisión que en lo que es las bibliotecas. Los servicios de las bibliotecas todavía van a estar. Puedes ir a la biblioteca, puede ser que tengas que ir a otra biblioteca en vez de la biblioteca que, que se cerró, pero esos servicios todavía se van a mantener. ¿Ya tienen los nombres de las, de las 13? Tenemos los nombres de, de las 13 ahora de nuestra determinación que fue eh, hecho de una manera muy profesional. Ahora cuando va, esto va a, a la comisión para determinar primero si van a aceptar la propuesta mía o, o y si van a aceptar entonces las, las bibliotecas. Puede ser que ahí van a ser, tener discusiones a ver cuáles van a estar cerradas y cuáles se van a mantener abiertas. Nosotros lo hicimos de una manera profesional, sin eh, ningún tipo de, de, sin mirar a lo que es lo, lo político de este proceso. Yo no, yo no deseo entrar en, en lo que es la política. Estas esta decisiones fueron basadas en lo que es eh, la opinión profesional del director de las bibliotecas. Alcalde, cuando usted asumió el cargo, eh, usted dijo que trataría de no tocar los programas de niños ni tampoco los programas de ancianos. ¿Cómo le cae a los padres de familia el cierre del bootcamp que obviamente va a afectar a los, a los juveniles? Eso fue una parte de, de prioridades, es parte del departamento de correcciones, sirve como 200 eh, personas eh, juveniles. Eh, y lamentablemente es un programa que, que cuesta casi 5 millones de dólares para 200 personas y las prioridades no nos dejaron este mantener eso, eso abierto. ¿Qué alternativas se les va a ofrecer a los muchachos? ¿A dónde los van a llevar? Bueno, eso son, ellos están parte, son parte de, del sistema de correcciones, así que van a estar, van todavía a estar parte del sistema de correcciones. También nosotros podemos hablar con el Estado, así que no, si nos pueden ayudar en, en este sentido. Pero a este momento, lamentablemente, es una de las prioridades que eh, no es una de las cosas que tiene la prioridad más tan alta 
y se tenía que eliminar. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I vote for you, but I pray before I vote for you. Uh -huh. I want to ask you, do you pray before to take any decision about this budget? I, uh, I, uh, I uh, you know, I go to church every Sunday, and, uh, and I pray, you know, at church. Uh, do, do I actually sit and, and pray before every decision? No, I, I don't do that. Uh, I hope that I have the guidance of, of God. Uh, in every decision I make. And so, um, you know, I try to do what's, uh, what's in the best interest of Miami-Dade County, and I try to do, and the decisions I make, I think, are the ones that, you know, make sense to me. And, and, uh, but I am guided by, look, there's, uh, uh, some of these decisions are going to affect families, and, uh, and especially the families and you know, the workers uh, here in Miami-Dade County. I don't take those decisions very lightly uh, when I make them, but uh, I am the mayor, and I have to make some tough decisions, and I'm willing to stand up and make them. Could you talk a little bit about the, some of the freezes that are going to be in place, at least for the next year, as far as employees are concerned, merit and flex pay and all that? Well, there are, there are a number of freezes. The, the, the freezes that, that, that we're proposing, uh, basically what we're proposing in terms of concessions, is everything I voted against as a commissioner. The freezes in merit, longevity, uh, premium, et cetera, all those freezes, plus the 3% cost of living adjustment. And then we're going to need an additional 5% uh, uh, contribution to health insurance from, from the employees. Most of that I voted against last uh, about a year and a half ago because I knew what it was, wh wh where we were heading into and that we really couldn't afford it. And so here we are, and we really can't afford it. And so that's why that's part of the concessions that we're going to be asking from, from the unions. In addition to that, I'm going to be asking for an additional 5% contribution to, uh, to health insurance. 800 people are in total physically losing their jobs. Is that correct, according to That's our, our estimate, and, and I want to make sure that, that people understand. This is a moving, every day in Miami-Dade County, uh, some people leave, um, and that's our best estimate right now that come, Come uh, October, 800 people will will be will be uh, will be pink slipped. Now we we have a what's called a uh, pipeline, and there's bump downs. And sometimes, in order to get to the final person that actually ha gets the pink slip, it takes a while to get to that. And maybe some other people have left in the interim. So at the, uh, right now, if everything happened October 1st, about 800 people would be uh, would be laid off. Do you foresee yourself having to really fight? to get this budget passed at this point because it's good. Do I foresee a fight? Well, I mean, this is obviously a proposal. What do you, I mean, what do well, you, what do you think the uh, conversation uh, is going to be like in, in trying to make this happen? As a commissioner, I, uh, I always fought the mayor, so I don't think that, you know, what uh, turnaround is fair play, right? So I think that some commissioners are probably going to be fine or nearly fine, and then some commissioners are going to fight all the way. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's part of the process, and so I'm, I'm ready for that. This is, you know, our and my budget and my, and my proposal. Defin uh, without a doubt, the commission has their role to play uh, in this process, and so we'll, we'll see what, uh, what, what it brings. So far, with my conversations with the commissioners, you know, some of them are fine, and then some of them are saying, well, I don't like this and I don't like that. It's always about details, and, and, uh, and some programs are very important to some commissioners, and other programs are important to other commissioners. That's something that they're going to have to deal with, with themselves. I'm proposing a rollback to the millage rate of fiscal year 09-10. Uh, that's what they're going to be voting on, on on Tuesday, hopefully. And then if we do that and that's passed, then that sets the parameters of how much money we're going to have and how, how that money is divvied up in the end. I have a proposal of how to do that. The commission has the right to have a difference of opinion. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, the, in terms of dealing with unions and how you're trying to, to take back the 3% raises that kicked in in July, at the beginning of this month, right. um, the, the police are a different story. They, all told, they got a 13% raise, the 3% right plus the two 5% steps, one of which the 5% started back and went in back in the spring. Are you going to try and get that back? Uh, what I've said is I'm trying to get everything back that I voted against. I voted against that too. Yes. So you're going to seek a 13% cut for Well, 5% they haven't gotten yet. 
three percent they just got five percent they got back in September all right and so uh, yeah that's what I'm going to be be seeking uh, in order to balance this budget yeah I voted against all that sobre la misma pregunta, el presidente del sindicato, el señor Rivera, dijo que jamás aceptarían que le impusiera a ellos una eliminación mayor a la de los otros sindicatos. ¿Terminaría eso en corte, es alcalde? O? Esa es la posición de, de la, del presidente de los sindicatos. Ellos, ellos obtuvieron mucho más que los otros sindicatos la última vez que se aprobaron esos contratos. Así que para mí es un balance. Bueno, las condiciones que nosotros estamos pidiendo de los empleados son las condiciones que aceptaron o se aprobaron el tercer año del contrato que estamos que, que está en efecto ahora. Yo voté en contra de esas condiciones que restauraron, restauraron muchos de, la, de los beneficios a, lo, a los empleados y también le dieron, le dieron un aumento de 3% en el costo de las vidas. Eso lo tratamos, estamos, vamos a negociar para, para eliminar esos aumentos y también estoy pidiendo para un a una aumento en lo que es la contribución de los, de los uh, empleados en el seguro eh, médico de 5%. Eso es lo que vamos a, a, a pedir. Ahora, me he reunido con varios, varias uniones, hemos, hemos tenido discusiones eh, francas, eh, pero ellos saben, eh, reconocen mi posición y yo re reconozco la, 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 la de ellos. Vamos a tener estas negociaciones, van a ser difíciles y vamos a ver cómo, qué sucede ahí. Actualmente tienen que dar 3%, tendrían que dar un 5% más, entonces sería un... Los, los empleados, la, la mayoría de los empleados, todos los empleados recibieron este, un, 3, un aumento de 3% hace dos semanas. Uh, eso es parte de las reducciones que estamos, estamos buscando y, y, y también otro 5% en la contribución de los empleados en los seguros uh, de, de, de médico. De salud. Sí. ¿Y qué pasa con los presupuestos de los comisionados para sus oficinas? ¿Los presupuestos para los gastos discrecionales también? ¿Y los fondos para las, las organizaciones de base comunitaria? Que ¿Está reduciendo, está proponiendo una reducción en esos presupuestos? Sí, eh, la, en el presupuesto de la comisión una reducción de, de 10%. En lo que es el, el presupuesto para los fondos de discrecionales, ellos no tienen ese fondo de ahora. No. Entonces, un, un presu, un, una reducción de, de 10% a, la, a lo que es la oficina de, de los comisionados. Y también, este, ¿cuál es la última, uh, la última pregunta? Okay. Eh, en eso se va a mantener... Los, los CBOs que, que dan servicios para los, uh, las personas de tercera edad, para los niños, y también eh, tiene servicios de, de comida, se va, se va a tener este, los fondos a 100%, 100 del año pasado. Los otros CBOs le vamos a recortar este, los fondos 50%. Pues, pues, sí. Todos los años hemos escuchado que se cancelan posiciones que no están llenas. Uh -huh. Tengo cuatro años de cubrir el condado y todos los años es lo mismo. Sí. A mí no me hace sentido común ni lógica si tenemos una crisis financiera y restricciones presupuestarias, todos los años estar poniendo en el presupuesto mil, dos mil posiciones que no están llenas aún, que, que queremos llenar y al final de la historia terminar cancelándolas y, y se hace como un acto medio dramático de que estamos cancelando empleados y al final no hay nada de eso, la mayoría son, la gran mayoría, son posiciones que no estaban llenas. Bueno, eh, ¿Va a continuar usted en su administración todos los años agregando posiciones que al final hay que, tener, hay que eliminar? Aquí no se está agregando, agregando este, posiciones, aquí se están eliminando posiciones. Vamos a tener este, 1.300 posiciones menos en, en, el, en el próximo año que en este año. Ahora, de esas posiciones, 500 son vacantes. Pero hay 800 que hay personas que están ocupando esa, esas posiciones. Pero de todas maneras, estás rebajando los números de, de empleados en el condado de Miami-Dade. Acuérdate que tenemos que tenemos 26.000 empleados en el condado de Miami-Dade. Entran y salen, entran y salen. Por eso tú tienes, tienes eh, siempre vas a tener posiciones vacantes. Porque hay personas que se retiran, encuentran otro trabajo así, y se queda vacante. Así que es fácil ya eliminar esos cuando están vacantes. Entonces eh, es más difícil cuando está eh, eh, afectando un, un empleado, la vida de un, uh, un empleado, 
800 empleados van a estar afectados porque van a tener este, van a perder, perder eh, su, uh, su empleo. Acá en su oficina eh, se va a mantener la posición del administrador y cuánto reduce de la oficina de la alcaldía que ya había unificado el, el exalcalde Alba. Bueno, eh, la oficina va a tener una reducción de 20%. Uh, y sí, todavía tenemos un, una, una administradora en el condado porque tenemos que tener una administradora en el condado de Miami-Dade hasta el noviembre del año que viene. Pero eh, los, uh, los, los uh, deberes de esa posición, las responsabilidades de esa, de esa posición van, van a cambiar drásticamente. Si, si van arriba van a ver que no se va a llamar eh, esto el County Executive Office, se va a llamar la oficina del alcalde. Todos los directores, todas las personas que sa saben que, que ellos reportan a mí, uh, no a la administradora. Ella va a tener ciertas funciones, etcétera, como otras personas en, 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 en lo que es mi, mi, el, el equipo que voy a formar, uh, pero no va a ser la misma manera que, que funcionó el, este condado antes. Alcalde, hoy algunos empleados del condado estaban un poco molestos cuando supieron que creo que usted va a nombrar un jefe de despacho que va a ganar un salario de 225 mil dólares. Uh -huh. Algunos empleados con los que hablé hoy decían que no es justo que ellos tengan que aportar un 3% de aumento cuando simultáneamente se está contratando gente nueva con salarios elevados. ¿Qué le dice a esos empleados a quien no les caen bien estas noticias? Bueno, primero, este, yo tengo que contratar empleados, eh, voy a contratar menos empleados, pero voy a contratar empleados que tienen capacidad. Porque, y también eh, he dicho que el presupuesto de, de la oficina del alcalde va a tener una reducción de, de 20%. Eso es eh, la línea final para, para mí. Pero para mí es importante que tenemos personas de capacidad para cambiar la dirección de este condado. Yes. Uh, you're going to reduce the county commission budgets by 20%. 10%. Excuse me, 10%. Yours is by 20%. My 20%. The, um, One of the practices they've had through the years is that they, whatever they don't spend in their, their office budgets, they keep, and they roll it over year after year. Now, will that practice continue? Uh, and if not, how's that going to change? Our, we are proposing to uh, what we call scrub uh, the whatever, whatever uh, surplus there is in the county commission's uh, office budget at the end of the year. Uh, we're estimating that to be about $2 million dollars. And, and, and discontinue the practice of the rollover. And we're proposing that to the county commission. It's up to the county commission at the end to decide if they want to do that or not. Uh, we feel it's the right thing to do, uh, and we're going to be proposing that. And it's in our budget, by the way. So you calculate right now there's $2 million sitting in commissioners? We estimate not only that it's, na it's there now, that that's what will be at the end of September. On September 30th, there'll be $2 million uh, of carryover in the county commission uh, budget. And we, we're proposing that we take that and to be able to fund essential services in, uh, in the rest of the county government. No carryover. Piensa reducir el número de departamentos en el condado. Sí. ¿Eso significa más ahorro para el condado? Yo creo que, que sí. Vamos a empezar. Mira, yo, yo, yo pude hacer eso ahora, eh, sacar un, una, una uh, organización con 25, 25 departamentos, pero, pero no lo hice porque lo quiero hacer, eh, lo quiero hacer bien. Lo quiero, quiero tomar mi tiempo para hacerlo, para asegurar que podemos este, eh, obtener eh, la, los, uh, las reducciones más eficientes y también reducción el, en, en lo que es el presupuesto. Esto todavía, yo todavía no he, no he terminado, esto no termina hoy. Para mí, cuando ellos determinan, la, la comisión determina si van a votar por este, estos amillaramientos, eh, nosotros to, va, nos vamos a quedar aquí y te, vamos a seguir trabajando para reducir más este presupuesto, para obtener más, más reducciones, para obtener más eficiente, eficiencia en este, en este condado. Para esas decisiones, eh, usted no necesita la aprobación de la, de la Junta. Bueno, primero, sí, al final, eh, se tiene que cambiar lo que es, si, si, si obtenemos más, más eficiente, eficiencia, si obtenemos más, eh, podemos ahorrar más dinero, 
Este, nosotros tenemos que cambiar un poquitico lo que es el, el, el documento del presupuesto para enseñar eso. Y por eso le, le he dicho a los comisionados que esto no, esto no, esto no es el, el documento final de nosotros. Nosotros vamos a seguir trabajando porque, hoy estoy aquí 12 días. Así que en los próximos 45 días vamos a seguir trabajando con los directores, eh, con, lo, con las nuevas personas que van a estar en mi equipo para organizar este condado de una, una manera diferente y obtener más eficiencia, eficiencia en, el, uh, en el condado de Miami-Dade. ¿Algo más? ¿Has hablado con todos los 13 comisionados? He hablado con una gran mayoría de ellos. ¿Cuántos? 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 Who, who are we missing? We're missing, well, I did not personally meet uh, with the chair. I was going to meet with the chair today, and he had a procedure done, and so we, we sent him the information uh, in writing of uh, what our proposal is. Mayor, uh, the last meeting, Commissioner, you said you will promise yourself to provide uh, more information to the Commissioner. That's correct? Mm -hmm. What type of channel you can use to provide them this particular information. The, and uh, yeah. at the same time, what the channel use also to inform the public? Private well, channel or public channel? Well, first of all, tomorrow I'm, I'm going on Facebook and doing a Facebook town hall meeting. I think that's the first time a, a, a mayor has ever done that. First, as a matter of fact, it's the first time I've ever done it, okay? <laughs> so, uh, you know, that'll be new and exciting for everybody and, hope, and for me too, because I've never done that. Uh, and we'll be doing, uh, I'll be actually going out to, uh, to uh, different town hall meetings around the county to, to explain our budget. In terms of the, of the commission, uh, in the last three or four days, I've spent more time down there in the commission chambers than I did when I was a commissioner, okay? So uh, we're, we're communicating. I'm, I'm gonna be a completely different mayor in terms of how I communicate with the commission. First of all, I was a commissioner and I knew what I wanted or desired from the mayor in terms of, of communications. And, uh, and I think we're going to have a, a very good working relationship. Doesn't mean they're going to agree with me all the time, and I don't expect with them, for them to agree with me all the time. I expect a, a very healthy debate, but a debate that's, fa that's based on philosophy uh, and, and differences of opinion, but never based on personality. And, uh, and right now, or make it personal. And so right now, I feel pretty confident about that. So the, the relationship between the mayor and the commission uh, is going to be different, and the communication between the mayor and the commissioners is going to be very, very different under my administration. Questions? Yes, mayor. The obviously a, a small part of the budget, but nevertheless an issue that seemed to speak to voters: the car allowances that mm -hmm. went both for the county mayor and it goes both the county mayor and the commissioners. Uh, what man. are you proposing? No, I don't have a car allowance. Okay, I'm going to drive my own car. Uh, we're discussing that with, with, uh, with the commissioners. You know, the commissioners are the lowest paid, you know, people in Miami-Dade County government. What I do believe we need to do is provide them with a vehicle, you know, a county vehicle, uh, and stop the practice of uh, leasing cars. Basically pick a vehicle that uh, will be, uh, will fit their needs as far as the needs they, the, the services they need to provide as commissioner, and that'll be the standard vehicle for the 13 commissioners. American made, okay? No Mercedes, okay? All right? Uh, and, uh, and I think that that's, that's, I think that is, is reasonable, and I think the people of Miami-Dade County uh, can understand that. They, they are paid $6,000 a year. They do have to do a lot of work for Miami-Dade County. They should be given a county vehicle, and, uh, and a standard one at that, and, and, and I hope that that is what uh, they'll agree to. In your budget, are you zeroing out the car allowance first for the, for the mayor? Well, the thing is, part of the problem that we have with the car allowances is that the county, for some, for some unknown reason, uh, paid up front all these leases. And so we've got these cars now here. And so what I'd like to do is phase that out. As these leases go away, we pick a, you know, maybe one, two, or three standard cars and say, okay, that's the county vehicle that, uh, that you have. And, uh, and that's, you know, th I'm, I'm actually formulating this in my head as we speak. And we did speak to a couple of commissioners about it. But I, I think that, that that would be the right thing to do. And in terms of, of other car allowances, we're looking at that, and it will be part of our, of, our, of our recommendations 
in the uh, in the next 45 days. Final question. Final question. Going once, going twice. Jackson Memorial. Yes. What is the situation there? Situation at Jackson is uh, because of our millage rate and because of the lower lower uh, property values. The, our contribution to Jackson will be diminishing, right, Jennifer? Jennifer, it's going down uh, because of that. That's our agreement with them. So if our tax rate goes up and more revenue comes in, they get more. This year, it's going the other way, so they're going to get a little less. Uh, the the president and CEO of Jackson is going to have to make the diff his. He's going to have a lot of difficult decisions to make in order to close his two hundred million dollar gap at uh, at Jackson. And I am certainly. Uh, willing and uh, able to help him in any way possible. We're we've been friends for for quite a few years, and I think that uh, you know he's he's got to make those tough choices, and I'll, and I'll be there to help him if uh, if he does. Okay, thank you very much. I really appreciate it.